Look at this thing. It's adorable. I'm really excited to battle alongside it in a playthrough or two of Pokemon Yellow today. This game has been brutal so far for electric types. Pikachu, Magnemite, and Voltorb have all been complete slogs when doing playthroughs of Pokemon Yellow. As a result, I'm really curious to see how the type that naturally counters electric types compares. I have high hopes for the ground type, so please Cubone don't let me down. Please just get a better result than Pikachu. As this is a Pokemon challenge, I need some rules, so here they are. I've also left them in the description so you can reference them later. Now, let's get into it. I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Pikachu, the uh, worst starter ever, with Cubone. It's cuter and has a better type than Pikachu anyways. Uh, fight me in the comments. When I did my Pikachu run, I reminisced about how the rival in the lab always beat me with his Eevee. This fight was frustrating back then. But with Cubone, it's a different level of frustration. I only have Growl. So yeah, I'm gonna lose here. The game selects what he evolves his Eevee into based on the outcome of these first two fights. So for Cubone, unfortunately, it's gonna have to go up against Vaporeon, the Pokemon it's weak to. For base stats, Cubone has 50 hit points, 50 attack, 95 defense, 40 special, 35 speed, and in generation 1, base speed determines the crit rate, so Cubone's going to be scoring these roughly 7% of the time. As a mono ground type, Cubone has a 2 times weakness to water, ice, and grass. At least we're not in Hoenn, so there isn't too much water today. It's strong against rock, fire, and poison, and it's both super effective against and immune to electric. The fact that Poison is the most plentiful type in Kanto is going to be a big advantage today. The fact that this type is so strong offensively makes me think that Game Freak probably gave it to Giovanni's team because it's so theoretically powerful. Uh, Guard Spec is obviously very powerful as well. Backing up a strong typing, it also has a surprisingly diverse move pool. Mega Punch, Body Slam, Bubble Beam, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Submission, Yuck, Earthquake, Dig, Mimic, and Fire Blast. That last one's like kinda strange. It also gets two signature moves in Generation 1, Bone Club and Bone Meringue. Unfortunately, Cubone learns Bone Meringue at level 43, and both Dig and Earthquake are going to be better options by then purely because of accuracy. If only this unique move was just a little bit better. I really wish that it was like maybe like 110 base power, like 55 power for each hit. That would be really nice. While I won't be using Bone Meringue in this playthrough, I will be using Bone Club because it's the first move that Cubone learns after Growl. So, yeah. I nicknamed my Cubone Cry because that's what I want to do, having to deplete all the PP of Growl in order to finally gain access to Struggle. This is the only way that I can level up, and the fastest way to do so is finding a Metapod in Viridian Forest and use Growl against it while it uses Harden. Uh, it's just a riveting fight. In Generation 1, enemy Pokemon have infinite PP, uh, lucky them, and Metapod has no attacking moves, so this is just a sure bet. Finally, with my PP depleted, I start to struggle, and that begins my training. It does recoil damage equal to half the damage it inflicts in Generation 1. This was actually decreased in Generation 2. To ensure that I can keep this training going as long as possible because of how much recoil damage I'm taking, I picked up as many potions as I could from the Mart and grabbed all the free potions along the way to the forest. I'm using the potions to heal, because healing at the center would restore the PP of Growl, and uh, I do not want to go into another PP depleting grind against a Metapod. The potions that I collected so far provide me enough healing, and that allows Cubone to make it all the way to level 10 and learn Bone Club. I use it for the first time against the bug catcher at the end of the forest. This ground type attack is really bad against these bugs, but it's going to be very strong against Brock. He opens with Geodude. I use Bone Club, it does more than half, Geodude's Tackle does 4 damage, and then it knocks the thumbs up boulder out. Uh, like the video by the way. Brock's Rock Hard Snake is next. It outspeeds, uses Screech, and my Bone Club does just under half damage. Even with its defenses lowered, Cubone takes very little damage from Tackle, and then it misses. Onyx uses Screech again, Bone Club takes it into red, and then Onyx uses Bind, which hits for 3 turns, taking Cubone all the way down to 11 hit points. I try for Bone Club again, it uh, it misses. Not having 100% accuracy is so frustrating. Onyx tackles, and Cubone takes so much damage, but it hangs on with two hit points. Please, Bone Club. It connects, and that means that Cubone has earned itself the Boulder Badge. Brock very regularly delays Pokemon by a significant amount of time. Here's some examples of Brock splits. 13 minutes and 50 seconds for Pikachu, 13 minutes and 58 seconds for Wigglytuff, 35 minutes and 42 seconds for Magnemite, and 1 hour 19 minutes and 31 seconds for Tangela. Yeah, 
that vine monster only gets constrict. Cubone's 10 minute and 1 second time is honestly very respectable. That's a time similar to Tauros and Raticate. Unfortunately for my bone wielding, skull wearing emo kid, the next route is pretty slow because of the bug types that are here. In Mount Moon, I grab Water Gun first. It's nice to have 4 times damage against any rock ground types that I face. Next is the rare candy, and then I teach Cubone Mega Punch. Finally, a usable normal move, but I still don't have anything that's 100% accurate and physical. Bone Club makes the super nerd easy at the end of the cave. I obtain my fabulous prize, the Dome Fossil, and then I smash Jesse and James. So that's minimum battles between Pewter City and Cerulean. There's no way that at level 16 Misty's going to be possible, so I'm going to go up against the rival first. He leads with Spiro. I picked up Mega Punch specifically for this flying type. While Peck isn't doing a lot, Mega Punch doesn't have two hit range either. I was worried that this would let it growl, but it doesn't. Instead, it pecks three times, taking Cubone down to half health. Sandshrew is next. Water Gun does less than half. It uses Sand Attack. Great. I use Water Gun again. Hit, but the Shrew doesn't faint. So both Spiro and Sandshrew are not in two hit range. I think that one or two more levels might really help with this fight. Because my accuracy has been ruined with two sand attacks, I miss against Rattata and it finishes Cubone off, giving me my first reset. I try again, I'm hoping for a bit more luck. This time Mega Punch misses first turn, ah, so that's about the luck that I wanted. Fury Attack does a small amount, this repeats on the second turn, and then I use Water Gun for the accuracy and knock the Spearow out. And then things get really bad. Sandshrew sets up so many sand attacks. I was feeling quite hopeless at this point. I was trying for Water Gun against the Rattata because it has low special and Water Gun's accuracy makes it a bit more likely to connect. However, when it does, it looks like it's only doing one third damage and Cubone faints. This is not going well. Instead of just trying again and wasting time resetting or using rare candies, which I want to save for later on, I decide to head over to the gym and face the swimmer and that'll hopefully level me up to level 17. At a higher level, maybe I'll get the ranges that I need to two hit both of the first two Pokemon on the rival's team. The horsey here knows Bubble, which is really annoying. It takes me into orange health, but luckily the following Shelter knows Withdraw. It's a water move, and it just spams it over and over, allowing me to take the victory. But I don't level up. I heal in the Poke Center and return to face the junior trainer in front of Misty. After knocking out her Goldie, and Cubone levels up to level 17. Okay, I'm really hoping that this gives me the two hit range. The rival Spiro uses Growl, misses, and my Mega Punch misses as well. Okay, that's a bad first turn. Cubone tanks a Fury attack well, Mega Punch does half, and then Growl lowers my attack. Ah, <sighs> okay, that's really not good. I miss again, Leer lowers Cubone's defense, and that sets me up really poorly for the rest of the fight. Sanshu still isn't a two hit, so I think that level 18 is what I'm going to need here for consistency. Once again, I miss too many times against the Rat, and that's it. Okay, one more time. If I fail, then I'll use a single rare candy and try again at level 18. To squash my hopes in this fourth fight, Spiro uses Growl first turn, lowers my attack, but Mega Punch gets a crit. Okay, that's good. Second turn, I miss, but the third turn, I take the bird out. Sandshrew's next, and it turns out that I can get a good roll here and knock it out in two turns. Rattata time. I decide to gamble with Bone Club because it's going to be dealing the most damage out of any of my moves. I connect twice and knock it out despite Sand Attack. Eevee is last. Hope has returned, please, I can do this. But Eevee, the uh, cat or dog thing, uh, you just get mad at me in the comments about it anyways, it knows that Cubone is a ground type, so it thinks like, yeah, Cubone must love sand, and it sprays it all over me. Watch uh, this completely riveting fight. Uh, Eevee uses growl and sand attack and back and forth, and I just miss endlessly, it feels like. Eventually, I decide to use headbutt for the increased accuracy. It works, and Eevee faints. Well, I'm really glad to have that fight out of the way, and I did not expect that it would be as challenging as it was. At least Nugget Bridge is quite easy now because I have a ground type move, and it's great against the poison types here like Weedle, Nidoran Female, and Ekans. Before I get to save Bill, I have to save the game because I'm worried about this mandatory lass outside of his house. I've dubbed her the Oddish Trainer after my Fossils video, yet yeah, she was absolutely brutal in that one. I cross my fingers and I hope for a one hit on her first Oddish. I get it, and that releases the tension. Okay, this one's an easy victory. In order to build out Cubone's moveset a little bit more before facing Misty, I decide to head to Vermilion City. I forgot to heal before the rocket, but luckily I win and obtain the TM for Dig. Finally a 100% accurate ground type move. Plus, it's 100 base power in Generation 1, so Cubone is going to be hitting really hard from now on. 
I pick up Rest because I always do in my first playthroughs with Pokemon. Body Slam is my next addition to my move set. It's nice to replace Mega Punch with this. I grab the Rare Candy behind the Gentleman, and then I go Skull to Head with the Rival. With its massively upgraded moves, Cubone has no issues in this battle. On my way back to Cerulean to face Misty, let's examine my level 24 Cubone's speed. It's 32 for those of you listening along, by the way. If you're watching, you can check out my current stats in the bottom left of the screen. So yeah, here was my thought process going to the fight against her for the very first time. Like, hopefully I outspeed the star you. I do not. Okay, so, well, I think the star me is just going to one-hit me. I think the only strat is body slam hope for paralysis. Oh, no. So, this is bad, but maybe I can make it past the star you with more health and then survive a star me water gun? It is its less powerful water move after all. And then I get a Gen 1 miss on Dig, so Cubone goes to orange and Starmie finishes it off with a single water gun. Just great. One more attempt, and then I'm just going to need to go and level up. I really never thought I'd say this, but this fight feels worse with Cubone than it did with Onyx. At least the snake was fast and could rely on that. I don't even want to think about what level Cubone would need to outspeed the Starmie. It has 56 speed. Just keep that in your mind for later. I will uh, mention when Cubone hits a level that it can actually outspeed this Starmie at. Because of an X Defend, I end up getting to the Starmie with green health this time. It uses Water Gun, I survive, use Body Slam, get Paralysis, and that cuts Starmie's speed to 14. I'm gonna move first now. Please Misty, just don't use X Defend. I need Dig to finish it. The Starfish tries for Bubble Beam, I hit with a crit, and it faints. All right, so I'm gonna need to test that fight because uh, that was very inconsistent, but I'm happy with this victory for now. In stark contrast to the Misty fight, uh, Surge is extremely easy. Uh, this one's pretty obvious. With him out of the way, I grab the Bike Voucher and pick up Squirtle. One fix that I could do here to my rooting would be to get the Bike Voucher when I first come through here before defeating Misty. That way I could bike back to Vermilion after defeating her and save a small amount of time. I pick up some extra potions from Cerulean because I'm running low, and then I face the Wrapping Lass. I was worried that Cubone was going to be too slow and get paralyzed here, but it moves first and takes Oddish out, and because of that her entire team's a sweep with Dig. In Rock Tunnel, I save before facing the first Pokemaniac. He's not too bad today, but you know who is bad? The junior trainer with an Oddish and a Bulbasaur. Oddish survives Dig, uses Sleep Powder, and starts to drain Cubone with Absorb. Please, I need to wake up. But in Generation 1, sleep is too strong and Cubone faints. So I didn't save right before her, so I have to face the Pokemaniac again and then get back to the Junior Trainer. This time, I save before her. And that was honestly a really good choice, because once again, Oddish survives, puts Cubone to sleep, and knocks it out with Absorb. Ah, this is frustrating. I can try to use Body Slam instead of Dig. This way I might get Paralysis and prevent the Oddish from using Sleep Powder. However, this time it uses Stun Spore instead, and that's way better for me. I'm not asleep, so I actually have a chance to win. I finish the Oddish off with Dig. Against Bulbasaur, I realize that my luck in this fight has been really bad so far, but I still managed to knock it out, and that's good. I'm moving on. This section of the game is truly a gauntlet. Wrapping last, Pokemaniac 1, Pokemaniac 2, Junior Trainer, and waiting at the end of the tunnel is the self-destructing hiker. Now, Water Gun is four times effective here, giving it a power of 160 but Dig and Bone Club are super effective and get Stab, giving them a power of 300 or 195 respectively. I figured that this would be enough, even if his Pokemon have good defensive stats. The first Geodude survives, hits me twice before fainting, Bone Club misses the second one, it self-destructs, and then it's Graveler time. I use the last PP of Dig on it and take it out in a single hit. I probably should have gone with Water Gun for the first two Geodudes instead. Either way, I've reached Celadon City, and with it comes some new TM moves. Most notably, Ice Beam. I could teach this right now, but I don't really need it for anything. While it's super effective against Erika, I'm planning to just skip her until later anyways. I could use it against the rival in Pokemon Tower, but his Fearow likes to use Mirror Move, and I really don't want Cubone to get hit by a super effective Ice Beam. Once I knock the bird out, the rest of the fight's really easy. The Chandler here are honestly sort of threats because their ghosts are faster than Cubone, but Dig's a powerful physical move with super effective damage, so it lets Cubone make it past all of them. At the top of the tower, Cubone has an encounter with its mommy. Unfortunately, we can't stay to chat today because we're on an intense quest to become the champion as fast as possible. Uh, here mommy, take this doll. It's uh, clearly a great substitute for Cubone. Jesse and James are very easy for my ground type. I grab the Poke Flute, run away from Snorlax, complete the Safari Zone, and grab some extra vitamins during my expedition. There are four possible choices next. 
Sylph Rival, Erica, Koga, or Training. It isn't always immediately clear which path is the best here. The Rival in Sylph is notoriously strong, and I have a level disadvantage. Koga is even more overleveled, and I don't have a type advantage. Erica has a type advantage against Cubone, but Dig is neutral against two of her team members, plus she's more on par with my level. Training is the final option, and I don't want to have to do this unless I absolutely have to, because it wastes time if I can get by one of these challenges without it. I'm always trying to balance these factors out and make decisions that lead to the best possible completion time. Sometimes training seems like the way, but sometimes it isn't. While I was obtaining some mandatory items in Sylph, I decided that facing Erica is probably the best next step. She opens with Tangela. I'm hoping that this thing is going to be manageable because I know that I can defeat her next two Pokemon with Dig. But Body Slam does almost nothing. The Vine Monster puts me in my place and forces a reset. Alright, so the best choice is obviously to train now. The Sylph Rival will be impossible since he has Vaporeon, and that thing is so bulky. Koga also has a Water-type Venomoth, so I need to be really careful of it. As I train, I teach Cubone Ice Beam and Sylph, and then at level 38, I head back to face Erica. Tangela's first. I use Ice Beam, it does half and freezes. Alright, so that was an amazing first turn. I use Dig on Weepin' Bell, it doesn't quite finish it. The colon O plant uses Sleep Powder, misses, and then I knock it out. Okay, this is a lot of luck so far. Maybe Ice Beam will do more to Gloom? Uh, nope. He uses Petal Dance, Cubone takes so much damage, survives, and takes the victory. Okay, so that's another fight that I'm gonna need to test. Next, I try the Sylph Rival for the first time. Unfortunately, the first turn he chooses Sand Attack, and that ruins this entire fight. Cubone also isn't doing enough damage, and I don't really want to try again at this level. The level gap to Koga is also very intimidating, so I think spending more time training seems like the best choice. During this training is the moment that Cubone finally obtains 57 speed, so uh, at level 40 I can outspeed Misty Starmie. Finding a consistent solution for that fight is probably going to be completely impossible when trying to complete the game with a good real time. I conclude my training in the fighting dojo and I'm level 43. Is this going to be enough for the rival? I outspeed Sandslash now and I knock it out with a critical hit Ice Beam. Okay, that's more luck. Magneton goes down to a single dig, Ninetales is still faster, but it uses Roar, which has no effect in a trainer battle in Generation 1, and so it faints for free. Kadabra tries to recover at full health, and Dig KOs it. So, uh, this is going extremely well. Vaporeon is last. He uses Aurora Beam, does more than half, my Dig connects, does half, and then the Evolution finishes Cubone. Some excellent luck, and then a very discouraging result anyways. Cubone can make it back to the Vaporeon, but it just doesn't have the firepower that it needs to knock it out. Koga's gym does have mandatory trainers though, so I can fight them, gain one or two more levels, and then see if the Poison Master will be manageable for Cubone. If not, I can come back to Sylph and try the rival again. Koga leads with Venonat. The fact that his whole team is part bug type, well, with the exception of Venomoth, removes Cubone's type advantage here. Dig doesn't one hit as a result. Now, because Koga has good AI, he's using Sleep Powder against Cubone always on the first turn, because it's a grass move. He also has AI modification number one, which means when the AI sees the opponent having a status condition, he's going to stop using status moves. And this makes this fight look terrible. Here is what was going through my mind in the moment during the next fight against him. I'm going to use Sleep Powder. It's going to put me to sleep. It's going to knock me out with sleep. Unless I wake up. I luck out, and like, I'm not going to make it past the third Venonat or the Venomoth like this without like a miracle. Well, a crit's a miracle, okay. Can I get a miracle here? Maybe. May maybe? Nope. <laughs> well, it's not consistent enough. I'm going to level. While leveling, Cubone gets poisoned, and then my mind is like, yeah, this is what I need to avoid sleep powder. Despite theoretically solving the problem, it means that Cubone is taking additional poison damage every turn, and since I'm relying on Dig, that damage is doubled. I could teach Earthquake, but I don't think that that's going to help. I'm just going to need to train more. I take a trip to Cycling Road because many of the Pokemon here are poison types, plus Cubone's defense makes it stack up well against the plentiful fighting types. At level 48, I attempt the rival again. I use Ice Beam, Sandslash survives, slashes, dealing one quarter damage, and then I get a Gen 1 miss with Ice Beam. <sighs> Just great. Despite this, I arrive at Vaporeon, and I've taken more damage to this point than I wanted to. Maybe I can one-hit it. I use Dig, it does so much damage aided by a critical hit, but Vaporeon hangs on with a sliver and knocks Cubone out. 
Okay, without a gen 1 miss, I'm gonna get to the Vaporeon with more health. This time I arrive in the green. With Sylph out of the way, I pick up Mimic and head back to Koga's gym. It's either him, Sabrina, or training now because I need his badge to use Surf. Against the Venonat, I'm using Ice Beam because it might freeze them. I'm assuming that Dig might not want hit. I think that the previous fights at level 45 really did condition me here. Plus, it's a requirement for these videos that I use the wrong moves against all of the Pokemon in this gym. The Flying Grass type Venomoth comes out, and for once I choose the right move, Ice Beam. It doesn't freeze, and then Dig knocks the Winged Behemoth out on the next turn. Okay, so all that makes sense, right? Blaine's next, and he should be a simple fight. But maybe powerful special attacks could be Cubone's undoing? I make it past his first two Pokemon without taking any damage. Arcanine is last. It uses Fire Blast, misses, I go underground, hit it for a lot of damage, and then it hits me with a flamethrower dealing half damage. Okay, so I survived, and with that, Blaine's out of the way. But now it's time for Sabrina, and I don't think she's going to be as simple. Abra misses Flash first turn, and Dig KOs it. Okay, that's a lucky start. The following Kadabra gets a big Psy Wave before it faints. And with that, Alakazam is last. It reflects, Dig still does almost half, Sabrina uses an X Defend, it recovers while Cubone's underground, and as a result it survives with two-thirds health. I decide to try to get lucky with Ice Beam, but Alakazam finishes me with Psychic before I get a chance to attack. The next fight is even worse. I arrive at Alakazam with Orange, and it one-shots me right away with Psychic. At this point, I had a realization about one of Cubone's flaws. Here's what I said about it in the moment while I was facing Sabrina for the third time. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. I, one of the issues with Cubone is like, it doesn't really have any setup options, so it just like relies on brute force, and if it can't get things done with the brute force, then it's, that's, that's it, basically. Like here, like, I gotta brute force this down, or paralyze it first turn. Okay, well that's what I needed. I think Body Slam against the Alakazam's the best, the best bet. There's only one gym leader left now, Giovanni. Dugtrio outspeeds, hits with Earthquake for a third, and then takes my Ice Beam, and it doesn't faint. The Mole has a decent special after all. Giovanni uses Guard Spec second turn, and this is the same result as if Ice Beam had one hit it. I sustain a small amount of damage from Fury Swipes before I take the Persian out. Now, I think that I can do it. Earthquake will manage the Nidoqueen. Right? Well, wrong. It survives and takes Cubone into orange with its own Earthquake. Luckily, second turn it uses Leer, and I finish it off. Nidoking time but it's too fast, and that's that. I trained in Giovanni's gym to gain two more levels. I wanted to know if this would allow me to consistently one-hit the Dugtrio with Ice Beam, and then this happened. Okay, that's a critical hit. Well, I don't know anything now. I think Body Slam because it's a two-hit. Oh, Slash doesn't do that much because I have good defense. Uh, okay, that's better than an Earthquake. Mmm, won't get it. Ugh, I'm just so slow. Well, I'm going to win because Giovanni's awful. Hey, also remembered Bubble Beam this time for the Rhydon, so I feel really good about that. And you know what doesn't feel good? Losing to the final rival's Kadabra because it gets a critical hit with Psy Beam. The second fight against him, it doesn't get a crit, and I knock it out. It's Vaporeon time. I can get lucky here because it knows Mist, Haze, and Hydro Pump, so it's going to randomize between those three moves. In this case, I get lucky, that allows me to attack three turns in a row and knock it out. So Cubone's made it to the league after about one and a half hours. It's several minutes slower than Mankey, Paris, and Rattata to this point, and it's extremely close to my second playthrough with Onyx. Overall, that suggests that Cubone's a bit easier than the rock ground snake. But this skull-wearing, bone-whacking cutie's worst nightmare might be next. It's time for Lorelei. Dugong's first, and Cubone has no options for setup here, so rest isn't even a benefit to me. However, in this fight, the Dugong uses Bubble Beam and then Aurora Beam, and that knocks Cubone out in the first two turns. Okay, I have to use my rare candies now. At level 67, I still take almost half damage from Dugong's Aurora Beam. I knock it out because Earthquake is doing more than half, but the following cloister is too strong. Now, let's examine Cubone's move pool again on the right side of the screen. One thing that's peculiar about it is that this ground type can learn Fire Blast. Why? Uh, well, it's obvious. It's the uh, same reason that Aerodactyl can learn Fire Blast. Okay, uh, moving on. I use Body Slam on Dugong, it paralyzes, prevents the seal from moving, and then I go for Earthquake, hoping for the KO. But it survives and gets a Bubble Beam before going down. Cloister takes massive damage from Fire Blast, gets burnt, uses Ice Beam, and does so much. Oh no, oh no! But Cubone survives with a single hit point. It spams with Draw, giving Cubone the time it needs to knock it out. Jinx comes out next, and unfortunately it's faster, and Cubone faints. 
That attempt felt much better, but I needed an answer for Jinx's speed. I try a couple more times bringing Mimic into the fight in an attempt to set up with Amnesia, but this doesn't work and with that it's time to train. While I'm training I realize that one thing I didn't do during the playthrough was grab the rare candy and the rocket hideout. I take the time to do this now. With an additional rare candy and some training, I am now at level 71 for Lorelei. But Cubone still can't win. I thought that maybe Seismic Toss with 100% accuracy would give me better results against Cloyster and Slowbro, but in this case it isn't helping me get a better outcome. The fact is that Cubone is just taking far too much damage from her water and ice type attacks. I settle in and start grinding in Victory Road. At least Cubone's moveset is decent for managing all the wild Pokemon here. At level 75 I try again, I set up on Slowbro with Amnesia, and now I'm taking very little damage from Surf. I just need to take the Hippo out, but it gets a crit with Surf and finishes me instead. Ah. And then in the next fight, Cloyster finishes Cubone off with Clamp. Ah. So I guess I'm heading back to Victory Road to continue my training. I have to say that this was starting to feel quite hopeless. Cubone's now level 80, and I really just need to get past Lorelei. I think that the rest of the league is going to be quite simple at this level. I use Earthquake on Dugong, it's still not a one hit, but at least it's in Super Potion range now. Lorelei heals, and I knock it out. Cloyster's next. Fire Blast still doesn't do enough, Clamp hits, Lorelei inserts a Super Potion between turns of Clamp, like, that's fair. Clamp continues, but it stops after two turns. Okay, so that's my moment, I finish the defensive ice type off. For Slowbro, I have to gamble, and here I try to set up Amnesia. I need these boosts so that the Lapras will be manageable. I get all three in, and then I knock it out over three turns. I miss Fire Blast against the Jinx, so yeah, I should be using Earthquake here just for the accuracy, and the Jinx is really frail anyways. I manage to knock it out. So this is the first time that I've made it to Lapras. Please, Fire Blast. It hits, and Lapras faints. Yes, I did it. So sometimes when I'm writing these scripts, I debate cutting important trainers out of my videos because sometimes they're just far too weak if you have the right moves. And uh, today that's the case for Agatha. But I'll leave her footage in just because she's an Elite Four member. It would be kind of weird to omit one of them. With a powerful ground type move though, her team's an easy sweep. However, Lance could be harder. Gyarados is first. I mimic Hyper Beam hoping that it's going to be a one hit, but it isn't and Cubone needs to recharge. That gives Lance the time to heal Gyarados, my next Hyper Beam misses, and Hydro Pump does so much, and then the next one knocks me out. Maybe Blizzard against Gyarados right away, it might freeze after all. I miss first turn, take damage from Hydro Pump, and then I freeze with my second Blizzard. Okay, that's all the time that I need to rest up. From there, this is probably going to be a free win. I steal Hyper Beam, saving Blizzard's PP, I use Earthquake for the two Dragonairs, and then I finish the Aerodactyl and the Dragonite with Blizzard. Cubone has arrived at the champion. Against Sand Slash, I Mimic Slash, just in case I need it later in the fight. Turn 2, I use Blizzard, and I knock the opposing ground type out. Alakazam moves first, but it uses Recover. Just great choice, so Cubone gets to take it out for free. Now it's Executor time. Because I'm a ground type, it's just going to keep spamming Leech Seed, and that allows me to take it out with two Blizzards. Ninetales and Magneton are obviously easy, and that leaves only the Vaporeon. I outspeed, do more than half with Earthquake, Vaporeon uses Mist, and Cubone clocks in with a time of 2 hours, 17 minutes, and 54 seconds, at level 82 with 32 resets, and a game time of 7 hours and 20 minutes. But if you've watched my videos before, you know that we're not done here. There's still Mewtwo, and a lot of other stuff. I want to see if I can defeat it at the level that I beat the League at. Today, I know that this is going to be possible, I just have to freeze it with Blizzard. However, Mewtwo really just wants to crit Cubone. One, two, three, okay, four, but this time it was with Swift. My fourth Blizzard freezes, and then I use Earthquake. Whoa, that did like a surprising amount of damage. I probably should have just led with that instead of using the freeze strategy. Either way, Cubone finishes the Mewtwo off, and as a reward for all of its hard work in this playthrough, I let it evolve into Marowak. But my hard work isn't done. I need to go back and test all of the fights that I felt were inconsistent and come up with better strategies. After all, I'm going to be doing a follow-up playthrough. Brock is the first gym leader that I test. I was worried about consistently defeating him at level 10 because the Onyx is outspeeding. That means it can use Bide on the first turn, and since I'm moving second, I'll hit it with Bone Club, meaning it's going to deal damage back to me. Let's see how much damage Bide will do. And the answer is a lot, but Cubone hangs on and takes the victory. So there is a scenario that can play out that means Cubone has no hope. And this is when Geodude does a lot of damage, Onyx comes out, uses Bide first, and Cubone connects with Bone Club. 
then in that case, I just lose. But normally the fights don't go this way, after all Brock only has a 1 in 4 chance to use Bide. The regular fights usually look like this where Cubone emerges victorious with green health. I went 9 and 1 against Brock at level 10, so that's consistent enough. Rival 2 was the next trainer that caused me a lot of problems, because Cubone didn't have 2 hit ranges for the Spiro and the Santru. One level higher at level 17, I still didn't get the range that I need, but at level 18 I can do it. More training in Mount Moon will easily solve this problem. This fight can still go wrong because Spiro can lower my attack with Growl and Santru has Sand Attack. Because I'm optimizing for real time, I think that level 18 just makes sense. I end up winning 7 out of 10 fights here. And now it's time for the leader that I was most worried about, Misty. And I'm not going to be able to solve this one with speed. Previously I fought her at level 24, but this just isn't consistent enough. The most reliable way to reduce the damage taken is to outspeed the Staryu. It has 38 speed, and to move first Cubone needs to be level 30. This way I can knock it out and move on to Starmie with full health. Even with this, it's still very close when Starmie uses Bubble Beam. However, I get a good win-loss record of 8-2, so this is going to be my strat. I wanted to see what level Erika started to feel consistent at so I didn't waste time training. Tangela is bulky, but I can tank attacks well enough to get by it. The real worry here is the Gloom. It actually survives Dig until Cubone is in the mid 40s. I decide that I'll end up taking her on at around level 46 or 47. Even at level 46, Gloom can rarely survive a Dig. I think that putting her off as long as possible is the best choice to minimize resets and time spent here. Koga is the next trainer that I tested, and he requires level 54 to one shot the first two Venonats. I'm using Earthquake to minimize poison damage, and I have this status to prevent Sleep Powder. With this strategy, I get a result of 9 to 1. There's a rare roll on the second Venonat, and sometimes that causes problems. Plus, Venomoth's double team can make things really unpredictable. I tested the Sylph Rival after Koga, but it turns out I need a lower level to defeat him consistently. At level 50, I got the special that I need to one-shot the Sand Slash with Ice Beam. In doing so, I avoid Sand Attacks, and that makes the rest of his team much easier. The late gems aren't an issue until Giovanni. I did test him, but after doing the tests, I realized that the real issue is Lorelei. I'm going to need to figure out what level I need for her, and that will largely determine the level that I should go into the Giovanni fight at. If I need level 80 to make her consistent, then I should put off facing Giovanni until I'm around the mid-60s. Unfortunately, Dugong refuses to get one shot until Cubone is level 85. While it might be consistent to defeat her at this level, I don't think it's realistic from a real-time perspective. It's just going to be faster to reset a couple times and avoid training at a lower level around 80. Since I think that leveling up past this won't be a good idea, I'm going to have to make it work for the rest of the league. They weren't that challenging last time, so I'm happy ending my tests here. Now, it's time for playthrough number 2. How much will my experience and newly obtained knowledge shave off of Cubone's time? Let's find out. Right away in this playthrough, things don't go well. Onyx uses Bide, turn 1, absorbs damage from Bone Club, I use Growl, but the damage it pays back is too much, and that's an early first reset. I defeat him on my second attempt in the fight, but this is clearly an unlucky start because I'm now at a time deficit. In Mount Moon I face extra trainers, and I take Cubone all the way up to level 19. I've decided to play this safe, plus I need level 30 for Misty anyways. The additional 3 levels make the fight against the rival much easier, and Cubone wins on its first attempt. On the SSN, I make a silly mistake and I attempt to grab Rest before Body Slam. This leads to a situation where I have to try to save Dig PP and use Bone Club against Staryu, and then it knocks me out. So that's just awful play from me because I could grab Body Slam first. I'm only level 25 by the time I'm facing the third rival, so I need to spend extra time on this ship leveling up. While I'm doing this training, I realized something. I'm gaining stat experience, and when I tested, I used rare candies. So that means that Cubone is outspeeding Staryu at level 29, not at level 30. I go for Paralysis Slam against Starmie, but it doesn't work, and it knocks me out with Bubble Beam. However, on my second fight I get a crit, and that allows Dig to knock it out. Okay, so one reset here is an acceptable result. I save Dig PP for the self-destructing hiker, and that makes him an easy sweep. And then I buckle in for a long session of training. Cycling Road, Sylph, the Dojo. After nearly 30 minutes of grinding, I face the rival in Sylph. At level 49, I don't get the one-hit range on Sand Slash, but it doesn't lower my accuracy. As a result, I sweep his team until Vaporeon, and then Aurora Beam gets a Gen 1 miss. Ah, uh, okay. I guess that's awesome. I'm moving on again. Erika is next, and at level 52, I can take her out on my first attempt. Things get a bit trickier for Koga, though. At this level, it's hard to get poisoned, because I'm just knocking out all the jugglers Pokemon here in a single hit. So, I have to fight him without it. I choose Ice Beam turn 1, because this strategy is burnt into my mind after I used it so much testing at lower levels. I pay for this muscle memory with another reset. 
In the next fight, I switch to the superior earthquake spam strategy. Unfortunately, the second Venonat survives, but this doesn't ruin the fight and I end up winning. Now, I really need levels, so I spend some time training in Blaine's gym, taking Cubone all the way up to level 56. And, uh, yeah, then something very surprising happens. Yeah, Blaine defeats me. So, uh, I didn't even think to test him because I have a type advantage, and the fight against him was easy in my previous playthrough. Plus, there, like, really isn't much to do here from a strategy perspective. Just spam Earthquake and hope. So I just try again, and my second fight against him goes to plan. At least, uh, until the Arcanine. Fire Blast does so much damage, Cubone survives, almost knocks it out with Earthquake, but now Arcanine has another chance. He uses Takedown, I survive, and with that, it's over. But that wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, especially being such a high level. I train some more in Sabrina's gym, and then I defeat her on my first attempt. Now it's Giovanni time. At level 60, Ice Beam does one-shot the Doug Trio, Earthquake is a two-hit on Persian, and it lowers my defense with Screech on the way. I outspeed the Nido Queen and one shot, Giovanni guard specs the Nido King, and Bubble Beam knocks the Rhydon out. I really wanted to get to Victory Road at level 62. That's so that the training there would be more efficient, and I wouldn't have to be a higher level and gain less levels overall. But the final rival has something to say about this plan. I didn't test this fight because I assumed that Vaporeon knowing both Mist and Haze would give me enough wiggle room to defeat him in most fights. But then in this playthrough, uh, Hydro Pump starts to connect. One loss, two losses, three losses. So is this going to continue? Cubone's already getting close to the previous league's start time. On the fourth fight, I make it to Vaporeon at full health. He uses Hydro Pump, and Cubone survives with eight hit points. I strike back with Earthquake, and I finish the fight. In Victory Road, I do as much grinding against trainers as I can, and then I switch over to Wild Pokemon. After using all my rare candies, I'm now level 79. It's time for Lorelei. I tank an Aurora Beam first turn, then I knock the Dugong out. Now it's time for Cloyster. He uses Clamp, gets a critical hit, and in uh, Generation 1, that means each successive hit does the same amount of damage. Cubone faints. The next fight, I crit Dugong, Cloyster clamps, Cubone survives, Fire Blast does a lot, Lorelei uses a Super Potion, and I knock it out. Slow bro time. Just please don't use Surf. Luckily it doesn't, and I've set up my Amnesias. Earthquake into Fire Blast manages it, Jinx is a one hit, and the Lapras is the same. I've got to be respectful to Agatha, I do need to show the footage. Um, yeah, she's easy again, so yeah, that's it. Lance is next. Gyarados gives me a loss with Hydro Pump on the first fight. In the second one, I make it all the way to Dragonite. I realize here that I didn't use an Elixir, and I lose because of it. With my PP refilled, I defeat the Dragon Master and move on to the champion. Same strategy as before. Mimic Slash, just in case. Alakazam outspeeds, it does so much damage, but Executor follows, and I can just heal here when it spams Leech Seed. From there, Ninetales and Magneton are one hits leading to his ace, Vaporeon. Its Aurora Beam does very little damage, and Cubone clocks in. It gets a time of 1 hour, 40 minutes, and 19 seconds, at level 81 with 11 resets, and a game time of 6 hours and 19 minutes. Improvements in all metrics. I was hoping that his real time could be a little bit lower. It did get a 37 minute and 34 second faster time. But where I'm really disappointed is the fact that I had 11 resets. That is 21 less than before, but I was hoping that I could be in single digits. I'm one level lower, and I'm one hour and one minute of game time faster. So, now it's time to rank Cubone in the tier list. From a real-time performance perspective, it was slower than Onyx's second playthrough and Paris's second playthrough. However, from a game time perspective, it's the slowest second playthrough that I've ever recorded. It got a faster time in its first playthrough over Pokemon like Pikachu, Magnemite, and Zubat. Ah, not a great accomplishment. <laughs> Notably, Cubone's first playthrough was slower than Eevee's first playthrough. Today, the skull-wearing, bone-wielding cutie earns a spot at the top of the E tier. And that brings us back to the question from the start of the video, which was, how does the ground type stack up against electric types in yellow? Well, it's better, but not by much. So for this comparison, I'm only going to use first playthrough results because I only did one playthrough with Pikachu and Magnemite. Cubone was 2 minutes and 45 seconds faster than Pikachu, and only 44 seconds faster than Magnemite. So the ground type doesn't get a big lead over the electric types. But maybe Pokemon like Rhyhorn and Diglett can do a better job? We'll, uh have to wait and find out because Diglett is up next. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks so much to my patrons, your support means the world to me and it's enabling me to make this content and you're also making my dreams come true. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. I use the universal Pokemon randomizer to repri- uh, to Ah, gotta stay relaxed while doing this. 
Otherwise, uh, my voice is going to get strained. Someone is going to say in the comments, they're going to be like, Hey, Scott, you don't sound like your normal chipper self. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, relax my voice. Relax, just, like, stay calm. Honestly, this typing is really great offensively, and that makes me think that Game Preak... Game Preak, oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that? By the way, I nicknamed my Cubone Cry because that's what I want to do, having to deplete the PP of Growl in order in, in order to... Uh, I'm falling apart. Brock's Rock Hard Snake is next. It outspeeds, uses Screech, and my Bone Club does just... Uh, uh, rock, rock, uh. Brock's Rock Hard Snake is next. It outspeeds, uses Screech, and my Bone Club just... Uh, just uh, Brock very regularly... Re regular, regularly... Bone Club makes the super easy, super nerd. What? Super? What did I say? I obtained my fabulous prize, the dome, po the dome, uh, puzzle. I take a crip, a crip. Uh, I take a trip. Come on. I use ice beam, sand slash survives, survives is slashes, sand slash survives slashes. What? Stop writing things like that, Scott. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. Of course, it's gonna be hard. There's just no Blaine part of the script. I just forgot it. <laughs> what? At this point, I had a major realization about what one of... What one of... I sustained a small amount of damage from Fury Swipes before taking pure... Pursion out. <laughs> ah. I sustained... <laughs> Sustains. That's a hard word to say. But this skull-wearing bone... Wa ah, bumped the microphone. Come on. That fight felt great, but... That fight felt a lot better. That fight felt... felt uh, that fight felt uh, so hard. That battle. That battle. <laughs> uh, that attempt felt great. <laughs> yeah, that attempt. I'll just go with that. It's time to do something I've never done before. In the game's code exists an unused battle for Professor Oak that can be triggered by a glitch. He has three different teams, each featuring a different starter. The one the player's Pokemon was weak against. I decided to face the team that includes his Blastoise today. Now, Oak has the highest level Pokemon of any trainer in the game. His ace, Gyarados, is level 70. Unfortunately, my Cubone can't survive its Hydro Pumps long enough to get three Blizzards which are required to knock it out. There's still hope though, because his second Pokemon, Executor, knows Hypnosis. I can mimic it and then hopefully put Blastoise and Gyarados to sleep. It works on Blastoise and I knock it out. For Gyarados, I attempt Blizzard first just in case it freezes. It doesn't, Hydro Pump misses, and Hypnosis inflicts sleep. I miss by clicking on Earthquake. Whoops. Gyarados wakes up, Hypnosis puts it back to sleep, and I'm able to knock it out. Cubone did it. 